Thousands of people in our valley have lost their jobs or seen their hours cut back. Straight ahead on Eyewitness News Live at 6, what you can do to get through these lean financial times or to help others. Plus, right now, one of the biggest unions in the valley is voting to give help to those in need, but not everyone agrees with the plan. And this local girl is showing up on newsstands around the world. Find out what she has to say about the picture and the recent terrorist attacks. You're watching Eyewitness News at 6 with Gary Waddell, Paula Francis, and Kevin Janison. Now, we don't live beyond our means, but uh, we are trying to cut down on uh, frivolous spending. You know, going out to the movies, stuff like that, we just can't do anymore. Southern Nevadans look for answers in uncertain economic times, while in New York, recovery crews search through the rubble of the World Trade Center towers, and in Washington, lawmakers and the military get ready for war. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Gary is off tonight. The slowing economy and terrorist attacks have hurt many Las Vegas families. Now people are having to make difficult choices. More and more Valley families are having to choose between paying bills and buying food. Eyewitness News reporter Eric Levine shows how people can cope while the Valley's economic struggles continue. John Furcho used to make enough money building trade show exhibits so his wife Margie didn't have to work. But this month's economic slowdown has John only working part-time. And his wife Margie is now trying to find a job to help take care of their son and a mountain of bills. She has to go back to work because uh, with, with being cut down, you know, we just can't do it with all the bills, the truck payment, and the house, the mortgage payment. And it's pretty tough. With 15,000 layoffs in the past two weeks, many Las Vegans are finding themselves in a position they've never been before. Credit counselor Michelle Johnson says at times like this, cutting unnecessary expenses is a must, and things like mortgages and credit card debt can sometimes be delayed. Deal with the creditors. They're going to be willing to work with you. A lot of creditors have hardship programs, very short term, three to six months, that will enable you to, to meet a minimum payment. Of course, for some people, things are to the point where a simple phone call won't be enough. Attorney Barry Levinson says filing for bankruptcy can allow someone to restructure their finances, stop foreclosure, and wipe out or greatly reduce unmanageable debt. If the economy is going bad, uh, a lot of creditors might not want to work with you. They may get a little tough with you. They may, you know, try to get their money just like, uh, you know, because it's going to be tough on them too. Still, for people like John, it will be a matter of making tough choices until his income level returns. And everything from non-essential spending to credit card payments are now on hold. One that's calling because I'm late, it's like, well, do I eat or do I pay my credit card? I'm going to eat. You know, I've got to be honest. Eric Levine, Eyewitness News. If you are in need of credit or payment advice, you can contact a handful of consumer credit agencies here in the Valley. The call is free. Meanwhile, if you think you are on the verge of bankruptcy, call an attorney first. In many cases, bankruptcy can be avoided. It's estimated 10,000 of the 45,000 culinary union members have lost their jobs in the last two weeks here in Las Vegas. Lack of tourism traffic has forced hotel casino layoffs, but now the union is trying to get its members rehired. The union is taking an important vote at the Las Vegas Convention Center right now. That's where Eyewitness News reporter Cindy Caesar joins us. Hi, Cindy. Hi. You know, the second vote of the day is just getting underway now, and thousands of union members have been filing inside the convention center in the last 15 minutes or so. The union members are voting on a proposal that will allow workers that are, are still working right now to shorten their hours in order to rehire those who have been laid off. Make sure you get a nice golden brown on there, huh? The hot spot wasn't in the kitchen for culinary union members today. They were at the convention center voting on whether current working members should cut their schedules from five shifts of six hours a day or work four shifts of eight hours a day. Shrimp coming up. Nearly one-fourth of the 45,000 culinary union members have been laid off in the last two weeks. And working members are hoping that by reducing their hours, it will protect their jobs and be able to hire back those who were laid off. If we go down to four days, eight hours, for every four people that are off, one person comes back to work to cover that day. But many of the culinary workers voted no on this proposal because they don't want to see their hours shortened 
and they also think that the major hotels and casinos on the Strip aren't going to hire back the people that have already been laid off. I voted no. And the reason why I voted no is because no matter what they say or what they're doing, I don't believe they'll bring people back off that steady extra board. I've been working for five years at the Circus Circus property, and when it goes dead, they cut and they just keep what's on the schedules. Karen Amaral, who is still working as a waitress at the Circus Circus Casino, also believes that if union members approve this proposal, then the hotels will reduce their schedules in the future, which would weaken the union. But members say even if the proposal wins, it's not a done deal. This is our attempt at trying, and I think it's a really good one, you know, but if the hotels deny it, that's it. We can't do nothing about it. That's right. Even if this proposal is passed today by the union members, it doesn't mean that the hotels will approve it, and thus it won't be enacted. And we won't know any of the results from this union vote until several hours from now, but we will keep you posted on tonight's 11 o'clock news. Cindy Caesar, Eyewitness News, live. Thanks, Cindy. With an estimated 10,000 Southern Nevada workers laid off and more layoffs expected, community leaders and service organizations, representatives are coming forward to help. New program called Helping Hand is being established to help displaced workers with everything from job training to financial aid. Someone said on Tuesday it'd be nice to have time to do something elegant, but we don't have time for that, so it's got to be a hit the ground running kind of plan. Several utility companies are pitching in to help by deferring payments for some laid off workers and several casinos have promised to extend medical benefits for those who have been laid off. New numbers show just how serious the layoffs are. The State Department of, uh, of Employment says there were more than 5,500 new unemployment claims filed last week, nearly twice the number filed the week before. Back in August, the unemployment rate was 4.8 percent. A four-year-old girl from Summerlin is seen waving a U.S. flag in honor of the victims of the U.S. terrorist attacks. The image is on the cover of the latest Newsweek magazine. Eyewitness News reporter Yetta Gibson spoke with the girl and her parents about the captured image and what they think it will mean to the country. A picture of four-year-old Lala Malowski waving a United States flag is now gracing the covers of the latest Newsweek magazine and London Sun. I want to show the wig in the flag. The snapshot was taken as she and her parents attended a prayer service for victims of the terrorist attacks September 12th at the Thomas and Mack Center. The Malowskis say the picture represents a renewed patriotism overcoming the United States after the tragedy. The world coming together and our country coming together and help inspire people. And the reason for La La's distinctive days into the nighttime sky was undeniably captured in the shot. A lot of our parents tend to think that she's kind of opening her arms up and looking up to God and to the angels, that she sees something. Yetta Gibson, Eyewitness News. The photographer was Ethan Miller. The Malowskis spent their wedding anniversary at the vigil. They were married nine years ago, September 12th. In the days and weeks following the terrorist attacks, Valley residents have been educating themselves on terrorism and the Middle East. They are reading newspapers, watching television, and visiting local bookstores. Eyewitness News is live with Andrea Bond at One Valley Bookstore with more. Andrea? Well, John, in this time of crisis, a lot of people around the valley are deciding to arm themselves with knowledge. They're flocking to local bookstores. This particular Borders bookstore has actually come up with a list of recommended titles for people to read. The problem is, chances are, if you want to get one of these books, you'll have to get on a waiting list. We all have questions surrounding the recent terrorist attacks. In our search for answers, many of us are heading to bookstores. I try to read as much as I can about all aspects of it and try to analyze, you know, why these people would. But many of the books that could at least answer some questions have been sold out. We have back orders for Middle East maps, for books on Nostradamus, for books on chemical warfare, for books on Islam. We were out of everything by the Thursday after that it happened. The shortage goes all the way back to the publishers. Many of them are having to reprint books, which could take up to six weeks. Still, the list of people willing to wait is growing. Others say other items have actually been selling quite well as well. Those include things like magazine maps of the Middle East and anything with pictures or information on the World Trade Center. Andrea Bond, Eyewitness News, live. Thanks, Andrea. Members of
Islamic community are taking steps to promote understanding and tolerance here in the valley. This weekend, area Muslims are hosting several discussions about Islam. Talks will be held from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday at several valley mosques. For more information and locations, you can log on to our website at klastv.com. Hanging in dimpled chads may remind you of last year's presidential election, but chad problems are also found here in Nevada. Look at what's being done to change that. Plus, a dramatic new way to treat a disease that kills up to half the people who get it. See how doctors are changing the odds for millions in tonight's medical breakthroughs. But first, Kevin Janison is here with a first look at our weather. Hey, Kevin. John and Paul, looking good as we get into Friday evening. We'll keep the warm weather throughout much of the weekend and let you know what the latest is as far as Hurricane Juliet is concerned. Also, all of your neighborhood weather, that and the seven-day forecast coming up in just a couple of minutes. Eyewitness News will be right back. You're watching Eyewitness News with Paula Francis and Gary Waddell. This portion of Eyewitness News is brought to you by General Motors. On Monday, Nevadans will have a new law on the books that could help us avoid the mammoth election problems that Florida went through last year. It defines the standard which election officials must use when counting hanging chads. Eyewitness News reporter Michael Geeser has a story. Nevadans who choose to vote absentee won't have to worry about how their chads will be counted. The state now has a new law explaining what's a vote and what isn't. Simply put, no light means no vote. Uh, just be sure that after you've made that attempt to punch a chad out, you check it. A good way to do it is after you've made all your selections, hold a card up yourself like you saw them do it in Florida. For the most part, the new hanging Chad laws are a non-issue since most voters use these electronic voting machines. But in the last election, 62,000 people asked for the absentee ballot, 50,000 of which used them. Those voters now have a law that defines how their ballot should be read, a law Florida residents could have used last year. Michael Geeser, Eyewitness News. The new ballot counting law is one of 125 new state laws that go into effect on Monday. Late this afternoon, attorneys for the Aladdin Resort filed for an emergency bankruptcy hearing. The Aladdin told the federal judge that the resort doesn't have the money to continue to operate. Attorneys say the company must file Chapter 11 bankruptcy. The resort says it expected to make a profit in the fall, but the terrorist attack and the dramatic drop in tourism that resulted rapidly dropped its earnings. The Bank of Nova Scotia stepped in with a loan of up to $50 million. To keep the resort running, the Aladdin will borrow $9 million immediately so it can operate for the next month and a half. This weekend, you can enjoy a series of award-winning international films right here in Las Vegas. The Blue Sky International Film Festival has brought 28 films from 10 different countries to Las Vegas. Some are full-length movies, others are shorts. Each of the films is an award winner. It, you would have to go to like Sundance or Toronto or the Berlin Film Festival to see these films. These films have been on the festival circuit uh, for about a year now. And it's the best award-winning films on the festival circuit. The films are playing through Sunday at the Regal Village Square Cinemas at West Sahara and Fort Apache. You can get passes for the entire festival for a single day or a single movie. Also this weekend, hundreds of people will be celebrating a tradition that dates back to the 1800s by eating bratwurst and drinking lots of beer. Oktoberfest kicks off tonight at Gordon Biersch Brewery on Paradise Road at Flamingo. The event will be held under a massive tent in the restaurant parking lot. The two-day event is the largest freestanding restaurant event in the city. Uh, during the day on Saturday, absolutely bring the family out. Uh, uh, bands all day long, a uh, food court full of Roasted corn, shaved ice, uh, barbecue sandwiches, burger, brats, pretzels, all those types of things. There will also be an arts and crafts fair and live music. Admission is free. The third annual Oktoberfest kicked off at 6 p.m. and it'll be going on until midnight and then it continues on Saturday from noon to midnight. I'm not sure we mentioned they brew their own beer. Yeah. <laughs> Does it really feel like October? No. Well, it's not October just yet, but I don't think that will stop the consumption of beverages. No, a lot going on this weekend. <laughs> and if you had to decide where Paula would be this weekend, whether it's having the brats and beer or watching the foreign movies, where do you think? <laughs> 
could be both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, dangerous, that's dangerous there. But I'm actually a big bratwurst <laughs> fan yeah, with my yeah. Wisconsin heritage. I know. I think we've got videotape actually. <laughs> oh, sure. From many moons let's ago. Let's move on. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have more details on the weekend plans later in this newscast. But first, let's take you to South Florida, where more rain fell today. They've been having a tough time. It's been one storm developing after another on a stalled front in south parts of the state. The Sunshine State that it's usually known for is just getting dumped on. Some areas of South Florida could wind up with eight inches of rain before this system moves out. And right now, it's not moving. Here at home, real-time neighborhood weather will start near Eastern in the St. Rose Parkway. 93 degrees and 14 percent. A little bit of a breeze over the south end of town. Elsewhere, we'll go to the southwest near DI and uh, uh, the, the Beltway, where it's 89 degrees. We'll venture out to Pahrump, our weather station there at the Willow Creek Golf Course. They are at 87, and near Sahara and Nellis, east side of the valley, 95 degrees right now. It's 97 near Flamingo and Boulder Highway, 92 up near Camino, El Dorado, and Ann Road, and also 92 near Jones and Tropicana. 61 on the mountain, 80, well, we just said we're... Dip down into the 80s in Pahrump. Boulder City's at 91. Laughlin still at an even 100. A little breezy at times today, mainly along the edges. Had a gust of wind of 31 over the south part of town, 29 up near Buffalo and Cheyenne. Outside the valley, the strongest gust was in Searchlight. That one to 39 miles per hour. High temperatures today, 71 on the mountain, 92 at Red Rock, 112 in Death Valley. And here in town, the east side of town made it as hot as 106 and 105. But moving west across the valley, most neighborhoods having highs in the mid to upper 90s. At McCarran, the top temperature was 99, 9 above normal, but 4 off the record that's been standing since 1978. And inside the car this afternoon, the carmometer, 128 degrees. It's still piping hot inside the car with it parked out on the blacktop. Here's Juliet, no longer a hurricane. It's weakened to tropical storm status. Still 70 mile per hour sustained winds and it has stalled. It's stationary. It's just battering Cabo San Lucas and most of the southern tip of Baja. Now some of these clouds may work their way up into southern Nevada, but not many. With the system there spinning itself out, we don't expect a whole lot of four of uh, of uh, uh, forward movement and with a strong area of high pressure developing that's going to act as a roadblock whoops it's going to act as a roadblock and prevent it from moving up into the southwest so other than a couple of clouds this was our only chance for rain and this isn't going to happen and with everything else going well to the north we will keep those warm temperatures here comes your forecast for your friday night just a couple of clouds, 70 degrees for the low temperature. The breeze will be light. Tomorrow, plenty of sunshine again, mostly. So we could get a couple of high clouds thrown in there. 96, the expected high temperature. Again, some neighborhoods will be up around 100. And here's your seven-day extended forecast. It's not much of a cool down. It's a slow process. Early next week, we'll get a few more clouds, but we'll keep those temperatures generally in the low to mid-90s at least, with overnight lows dipping down into the 60s, a very warm start to October, which begins on Monday. So it'll be uh, an October fest with the weather as well. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Kevin. Sure. Sepsis is a disease that affects about 2,000 new patients a day. It's an overwhelming infection in the body. Between 25 and 50 percent of the people who develop it will die. Until now, there's been no effective treatment. In tonight's medical breakthroughs, though, we see a new drug that's saving lives. Faxon Payne and his wife, Frances, rest easy these days. Two years ago, that wasn't the case. I had uh, massive bilateral pneumonia. and. Uh, my wife took me to the emergency room and I walked in and collapsed and quit breathing and my heart stopped. While at the hospital, Faxon developed a disease called sepsis. Dr. Wes Ely says it's a disease few people have heard of. Sepsis triggers, a, in a sense, a domino effect so that the initial problem might be an infection and that might be the thing that tips over the first domino. Then the rest of the dominoes start falling in the bloodstream, which is inflammation and blood clotting. With so much blood clotting, organs can't get the blood they need and fail. Dr. Ely says a new drug designed from a natural protein may save lives. Protein C, activated protein C, actually stops the inflammation, helps stop the clotting, and allows the clots that have already formed to break down. In a study of more than 1,600 patients, the drug reduced risk of mortality by 20 percent. It could save upwards of, are you ready for this, 200 plus lives a day in the U.S. alone. Today, Faxon and Dr. Ely have developed a special bond. I owe my life to him. I feel mighty good. 
it's nice to be recovered. It, is, it does my heart so much good to see him alive, talking, happy. The drug, which will be marketed as Zygris, is still in clinical trial. Currently, to receive the drug, a patient must be treated at a center that's participating. Nearly 150 centers around the country are testing the drug. If you'd like more information about that, send us a self-addressed stamped envelope and write sepsis breakthrough on the front of the envelope that's addressed to us. You can also find information on our website. Neurologists are hoping the cases of seven young people infected with HIV could help in the fight against Lou Gehrig's disease. Researchers found the symptoms of Lou Gehrig's decreased or disappeared in the seven patients after taking a drug designed to suppress the HIV infection. Doctors have long debated whether the nerve disease known as ALS or Lou Gehrig's is caused by a viral infection. And that's tonight's medical breakthroughs. All right, thanks, Paula. Chris is here with sports and a big football weekend for the Rebels. Oh, it's a big one. Big BYU in town. It's always going to be big. Less than 24 hours now before that big, big showdown. BYU is saying, hey, bring your best. We'll have more on the clash coming up. Plus, Hopkins and Tito have talked. Now they've tipped the scales. Sports is coming up right here on Channel 8. Well, it's the eve of UNLV's biggest game of the season. The Rebels trying to right the ship that is seriously taking on water. But a win over the Cougars will help the Rebels get back on course. Now, UNLV has never beaten a ranked team at Sam Boyd. The last time they beat BYU was in the 80s. We look for them to line up and they base stuff and then just, you know, line up and try to beat us basically physically and overpower us. And so we got to do things that, you know, match well with what they're doing. If Jason Thomas plays a good football game. I mean, he was MVP in certain different areas last year. Mm -hmm. and, and in the bowl game last year, he's MVP. If he comes out and plays well, which, which I would prefer, I'd prefer him come out and play a good game. If we're going to beat UNLV, I want to beat him at their best. Well, so far, nobody has seen UNLV at its best. At 0-3, they're still searching for some offense. Well, for the first time in this series, Lavelle Edwards will not be on the sideline when his former team meets the Rebels. Coming up in 25 minutes, Dave McCann visited with a former BYU head coach who's now dissecting golf courses and not opponents. Well, from the back alleys of America to the big stage, ultimate fighting is back on a grand scale. Nevada has sanctioned this sport that features elements of wrestling, kickboxing, fighting, jitsu. There are rules, and now there are names. Here's some of the nicknames from tonight's fighters. The Huntington Beach Bad Boy, the Janitor, Little Evil, Superman, the Iceman, Terror, Wolf, and the Dominator. Highlights as they are tonight at 11 o'clock. Fighting on a different stage, champions Felix Trinidad and Bernard Hopkins are now ready for Saturday's unification title fight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Felix Tito Trinidad, 158 and one half pounds, 157 pounds for Bernard Hopkins. Tomorrow's fight will decide the middleweight champion of the world. Well, the ripple that spread through the NBA when Michael Jordan announced his return has players and coaches still talking, especially those who know him best. I'm really happy for him that he's going to come back and do what he wants to do. He loves to play basketball. I'm excited for him. Uh, I'm happy for him. I'm glad that he's returned to the game that he loves, and I wish him all the best. It's going to be fun. Uh, it's going to be fun in the stable centers, and we'll just have to see what happens. And you know what's going to be so odd seeing Michael Jordan still with a 23, but not in a Bulls uniform. That's <laughs> yeah. going to be weird, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. You betcha. There's more news straight ahead. President Bush says the time for talking is over, while some diplomats continue to search for a way to get Osama bin Laden out of Afghanistan. Well, a group whose hobby it is launching rockets like this have been grounded. We'll tell you why the FAA made that decision coming up in a live report. Many people are concerned about the threat of a biological or chemical attack. But can gas masks protect us? Eyewitness News Live at 6.30 starts now. You're watching Eyewitness News at 6.30 with Gary Waddell, Paula Francis, Kevin Jennison, and Dave McCann. Thanks for staying with us. Gary is off tonight. A senior military official tonight denied reports that the U.S. has troops on the ground inside Afghanistan. They are just outside the country, they say. Meanwhile, the war on terrorism escalates and the cleanup continues in New York City. Officials say special forces are just outside Afghanistan as a prelude to military action. 
but military officials say forces are not actively searching for Osama bin Laden. Also today, the FBI released a note agents found during their investigation that included instructions for the hijackers on how to carry out the attacks of September 11th. In London, authorities have an Algerian pilot in custody who they believe taught four of the hijackers how to fly. There is reportedly evidence that also shows the alleged pilot instructor spent time here in Las Vegas before flying to Arizona to continue training the hijackers. In Pakistan, a Pakistani delegation held meetings with Taliban officials. The leaders are trying to persuade the Taliban to turn over the prime suspect in this month's attack, Osama bin Laden. Reportedly, no progress came of the meeting. President Bush says the time for talking has ended. There's no negotiations with the Taliban. They heard what I said, and now that they, they can act. President Bush says the United States is in hot pursuit of terrorists behind the September 11th attacks. The exhausting cleanup process continues in New York City, but with some disappointing news today from Mayor Rudy Giuliani. Mayor Giuliani says it could take a year before the entire area near the World Trade Center is cleaned up. A 420-foot crane with a base the size of a basketball court is being set up on the site. The crane can lift up to 1,000 tons at a time. Despite the addition of heavy equipment in the cleanup effort, firefighters are not stopping their search through the rubble. They never really leave the job. Another part of the job is helping families of their lost brothers. Besides picking through rubble and working to put out fires, New York City firefighters are also attending several funerals and memorial services for their fallen brothers. The attack on America is affecting this country in many ways. It has even put a halt to one local group's hobby of launching high-powered rockets. Eyewitness News is live with Tom Jones near Desert Inn and Swenson with more on this. Tom? Well, John, this is one of the rockets that members of the group would, would launch. They have some that are much, much larger than this. You'll see that in a second. Well, the Federal Aviation Administration has decided that these are now a security risk, so they grounded the group. It's an unusual hobby, to say the least. Tom Credo is a member of a group whose hobby is launching high-powered rockets. They usually set them off at El Dorado Dry Lake outside of Boulder City, and they launch them with the Federal Aviation Administration's approval. That is, until the September 11th attack on America. All of the rocket launches have been canceled since the tragedy. The DFAA grounded the rocket launches, citing security concerns, especially with the rockets flying high enough to hit a plane. Credo understands the agency's position, but he says his group has never had a problem or an accident. Well, we're pretty much out of business. We had a big launch going on this weekend up in uh, northern Nevada, in which we had some very high-powered rockets going up 70,000 feet. Now, Preto is a certified rocket launcher, and he says his hobby is perfectly legal. He says he hates that terrorists have put a halt to something that he loves so much. Tom Jones, Eyewitness News, live. Thanks, Tom. Trucks carrying hazardous materials are being scrutinized in Nevada and around the country. Federal authorities believe a number of Middle Eastern men have fraudulently obtained licenses to carry hazardous materials. Nevada police are stopping truck drivers on the highways for 10 to 15 minute inspections. Licenses, photos, and registrations are being checked. Thousands of trucking companies that transport potentially dangerous materials are being affected by the nationwide dragnet. Americans are now worried about other terrorist actions against our nation. Weapons sales are up in parts of the country as some people decide to arm themselves, and gas masks are in high demand as well. Jennifer Miller has more on the rush for protection. As America's troops prepare for war, so do its citizens. At this gun shop in Indianapolis, the demand for handguns has turned to assault weapons. In Denver, gun sales at this store have shot up a thousand percent since September 11th. Most buy handguns and shotguns. But Ryan Callaghan is arming himself with an AK-47 semi-automatic assault rifle. I don't anticipate on using it, but if I need to, it's there. And across the country, gas masks are in short supply. In Denver, stores are sold out. Probably two weeks before we would get something new. But Americans who are buying them may not be getting the protection they want. Some masks aren't equipped for biological or chemical warfare, and those that are may not be enough. 
Gas masks are traditionally worn to protect against tear gas. But for biological and chemical warfare, the military uses different masks and body suits. And Major Chris Petty says even these are not foolproof. I guess the bottom line, Jennifer, is personal protective equipment is a very complicated business. And uh, going to a store and buying an old military mask will not solve all your problems. The public needs to know that fast medical treatment after an attack is crucial. But Major Petty says he is convinced the probability of any attack is low. And if there were one, exposure could come fast, too fast for a mask to help. Jennifer Miller, CBS News, Denver. Experts say a gas mask would only be truly effective if you wore it all the time. Thousands of people in our valley have been laid off in the past two weeks, and now many people are having to make tough decisions about their money. Here's the latest on tonight's top stories as families around the valley tighten their belts. Credit counselors say the first thing people need to do is cut unnecessary expenses. Second, talk with mortgage and credit card companies about delaying payments and about the hardship programs they may have. For some people, a phone call may not be enough and they may have to file for bankruptcy. Bankruptcy filings are at the highest point in nine years. The Culinary Union held two meetings today. The union wants employed members to decide if they will go to a four-day work week to prevent more layoffs. The first vote was at noon today. There was a second one a half an hour ago. Union officials don't expect to know what the final tally is until late tonight, but we'll bring it to you. There are 45,000 culinary members in Las Vegas. Many of the recent layoffs have been among union members. Little Las Vegas girl is on the front of the newest Newsweek magazine. Four-year-old Alana Miloski was at a candlelight vigil the night after the terrorist attacks on New York and Washington. Las Vegas Sun photographer Ethan Miller captured Alana's image that night. Her father says the picture of his daughter symbolizes a nation united. Nevada casinos may soon be required to keep a closer watch on suspicious financial activity. The Bush administration wants to crack down on money laundering by terrorists. Casinos are still exempt from reporting money laundering to the federal government. Instead, they report to Nevada's Gaming Control Board, which then reports it to the Treasury Department. Coming up on Eyewitness News, some southern Nevada land is heading for the auction block, and that could mean even more growth for one particular community. And we'll show you what these Valley kids learned about pet safety and where your kid can learn more about animals this weekend for free. In the midst of gloomy economic news, there may be something positive for Valley residents. Southwest Gas may file a rate reduction request. The price the gas company has been paying for natural gas has gone down recently, and that means they may be able to give customers a break by lowering prices. Spokesman for Southwest Gas says it can't promise lower rates because if the market price of gas increases, rates may also have to go up. Local teacher accused of having sex with a student was in court today. Las Vegas Academy Theater manager Michael Vicious is trying to get his case dismissed. Vicious was arrested in February. He allegedly had a sexual relationship with a 17-year-old female student. The BLM will soon be auctioning off 10 square miles of federal land 10 miles north of Mesquite. The auction could spur a large population boom. Each acre is expected to go for about $500 or $600. The going rate for an acre in Mesquite is between ten dollars and $40,000. The new land may be cheap, but bringing utilities to it could be very costly. Some Valley students got a chance to learn about animal safety today. The star of the Animal Planet show, Emergency Vets, spoke to students at McDonnell Elementary School about staying safe around pets. I knew that you shouldn't push away your dog if they're pulling on your pant leg because that could just um, make them mad. And you should also not take the try to pet them when they're eating a treat. Today's seminar was a kickoff to the Animal Planet Rescue Expo, a free event at the J.C. State Fair, which is being held at the Motor Speedway this weekend. Well, October is a mere weekend away. Coming up, Kevin Janison will have the outlook for the first week of October in all your neighborhood weather. And we'll introduce you to the city's new fire chief.
We're still collecting money for the American Red Cross Victim Support Fund. Your donations have totaled nearly one point. Two million dollars. You can still make a donation at any McDonald's restaurant and for ten bucks. You can at least a ten dollar donation. You can get a, an American flag T-shirt. You can also give at any branch of Nevada State Bank or go online at KLASTV.com to make a donation with your credit card. A local discount chain celebrated its grand reopening with a special donation today. Sam's Club on Spring Mountain and Rainbow donated $17,000 to local charities. Officials say the money will benefit those charities feeling the crunch caused by massive donations to terrorist attack relief efforts. With our grand reopening, our company has the Walmart Foundation of which we uh, we use to donate to the communities that we are involved in. Our the money is being split among several local organizations, including Goodwill, Mash Village, United Way, and local police and fire department charities. The new fire chief for Las Vegas was honored today. Chief David L. Washington officially got his badge this afternoon. The ceremony took place at Las Vegas City Hall. Chief Washington says the Las Vegas Fire Department is one of the best in the nation. We have a dynamic organization here, and we're on the blink of being the very, very best fire department mayor in the world. And Dave Washington is going to take us there, because I love the people that I work with, and we're going to do some outstanding things. And we're coming up out of those fire stations, Councilman Mack, Councilman Weekly. We're coming to see y'all's people. Washington started out with the Las Vegas Fire Department in 1974. He recently became the city's first African-American fire chief. Oh, he's got a good attitude, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. Kevin Janison, you have a good attitude about the weather? Yes, I do. Uh, thanks for asking, John. It's <laughs> mighty fine here on this evening. We'll begin with real-time neighborhood weather up near Buffalo and Cheyenne. 90 degrees, 16 percent, 5 mile per hour breeze. Near Bonanza and Pecos, the Child Haven, it's 93. Another one of our 35 neighborhood weather stations down at Searchlight, Harry Reid Elementary, where it's 85 and 89 near Jones and Smoke Ranch. Other temperatures in neighborhoods across town, it's 94 near Cheyenne and Las Vegas Boulevard. At the zoo on North Rancho, already dipping down into the 80s, and it's 89 near Windmill and Paradise. Outside the valley, 88 in Pahrump and Indian Springs. Boulder City, a degree warmer, Laughlin at 98. Around the West today, there is still plenty of warmth to share here as we wind down September. Phoenix at 107, Salt Lake City at 90, Denver 88, Reno down to 79 for their high, while downtown L.A. hit a high temperature of 84 degrees. And around the country, showers and thunderstorms in South Florida still causing a little trouble. Some wraparound moisture in the Northeast, most of that rain is light. We do have a front sliding through the West. Now, this particular front, not really causing too much trouble, but it is breezy on both sides of it. And... Down here, we have Tropical Storm Juliet. The winds are down now to being 70 miles per hour, so below hurricane status. However, still a pretty potent storm, still dumping heavy amounts of rain on Cabo San Lucas and the southern, well, about the southern third of Baja there. It's stalled. It's stationary. It's just not moving. And we don't expect any significant changes over the next couple of days. So a few of these clouds may work their way northward, but as far as the brunt of the system coming in with a lot of moisture into the southwest, uh, as we've been thinking all along, it does not look like it's going to happen. Tonight, just a couple of clouds, 70 degrees for the low temperature. Tomorrow, we'll also have a couple of clouds, but it'll still be mostly sunny. Look for a high of 96 degrees tomorrow, and again, some neighborhoods will be up around 100. Out of the lake, 102, the expected high. Under a mostly sunny sky, should be a beautiful day out there. Mount Charleston, not bad either, 75 after a morning low of 48. And here comes your seven-day extended forecast. Looking pretty good, as long as you like the warmth. And if you're living in Las Vegas, you really you need to like the warmth. Mid-90s as we begin October, overnight lows will dip into the 60s as well. We might get a few more clouds next week, but otherwise, it does stay warm as we begin month number 10 of the year. Can you believe that? Going fast. Slipping huh? the calendar again. Yeah. Time is flying by. Yeah. Nice at night, though, huh? Yeah, in the early morning. Yeah. For, for about 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Kev. Okay. Chris Matthews is in with sports. Very important game this weekend. Mm. They've got to get a win. UNLV. I mean, they're own three right here. The Rebels prepare to meet the Cougars. One familiar face is going to be missing there on the sideline. Former Cougar coach Lavelle Edwards now on the outside looking in, but how far on the outside? We caught up with the coach, and that's coming up next.
And here we go. The line in the sand has been drawn. BYU battles UNLV Saturday. Everything seems to favor the Cougars. They're even saying the right things. They are a real good opponent. Even though they're 0-3, they have their 0-0 zero zero in conference. They've not lost any conference games. So we, and, and they're very capable. You know, I mean, they, they had a tough schedule. So we, we, I think we have to be at our best. And that's what I'm telling our young men. All righty, on the heels of that, for the past 29 years, former BYU coach Lavelle Edwards spent Fridays in the fall preparing for Saturday's kickoffs. Well, now retired, Edwards on Friday, he's going to involve some golf in his uh, dating activities now as he gets set for that uh, big UNLV BYU game. Dave McCann caught up with a coach where he was where else but on the golf course. Finish your career beating Utah and Salt Lake. You finish your round hitting the putt. It's all about going out in style. Well, it is. You know, you wait to get the camera and then you make your first putt of the day, and that's why it really helps. But uh, had a great time. We had a lot of fun today. These are different day before game preparations for you. Have you yeah, adjusted just fine? <laughs> I have. I, I've played golf every day this week except uh, Sunday. And um, that's a little that bit different tough. than what I've had in the past. But. Uh, it is different, no question. You have coached every UNLV BYU game up until this one. Is there any one that sticks out? Well, I remember when they came up and beat us, you know, uh, a few years ago with, uh, who was it, Sam King, I think the quarterback was. And uh, that was one that, because uh, we had, that was a good ball club. And I think we were, I don't know if we were undefeated at that time, but, but we were ranked pretty highly uh, Eighth. And at that time. And they came up and beat us at our own uh, place. And then I remember last year when we played them, uh, you know, I just uh, uh, thought, man, you know, this is a different UNLV team than that's been playing for a while. You know, John's got this thing going well. And so those are probably the two games that stick out. When you retired, John Robinson became the elder statesman <laughs> in the Mountain West Conference. Any advice for him? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go out and win some of those close ones. It helps the old uh, ulcers. And, uh, you can now be an analyst, so as you look at UNLV BYU on Saturday, what do you think? It's going to be a good game. It's going to be a tough game, you know, for, for both teams. I think uh, BYU is pretty good, and uh, I think UNLV's got very good defense, and I think if they can get, uh, you know, uh, get a little bit more productivity from an uh, uh, offense standpoint, then I think they're, you know, they're going to have a good ball club. All right, thank you very much. Well, the game is real close to selling out here. All the end zone seats are gone. About 2,500 sideline seats still available. And they're selling standing room tickets for Saturday's game. It's shaping up to be the second largest crowd to ever watch a Rebel game at Sam Boyd. Don't forget that kickoff is set for 4 o'clock. Be out there early. It's going to be a big crowd. Yeah, out there. early. Yeah. All All right. Right. Big crowd. Thanks, Thanks Chris. When we come back, at over a century old, this bridge in Michigan is still flying high. Coming up tonight on Eyewitness News Live at 11, a new campaign is underway in Las Vegas to help the thousands of workers who've lost their jobs as a result of the economic downturn. Tennis star Andre Agassi and friends kick off a star-studded event to raise money for local kids in need. Those stories and more tonight on Eyewitness News Live at 11. Century Old Bridge in Michigan has found a new home and how it got there is pretty unique. People have traveled on Smith Road Bridge since 1895. Today, it was picked up by a helicopter and dropped in the rain at a local biological preserve, wow. local in Michigan. The bridge will now have a different sort of traffic traveling on it as it sits in its new home off the beaten path. I guess people looking at the preserve or animals, I don't know yes. which. Yes, huh? beautiful. Yeah. That's our report for 6 o'clock. We'll be back at 11. Have a good night.